Hi everyone, Phil here and we're coming up to the new academic year. And some students will already be dreading that they'll be spending one or two semesters having to learn statistics. And so that got me thinking about a good starter video for such people. I used to see students one or two months before the exam in Russell Square by the British Museum and some of these students would be like Al here who says that they find themselves understanding much the concepts of statistics but the terminology was like learning a new language while to others the knowledge they had gained was just like spaghetti it was all jumbled up with bits of symbols that they recognized but didn't know what they were and so today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you like the first tutorial that I gave them a shortened version okay so first we'll make a distinction between a population and a sample so let me draw this to represent the population and the sample is something within it so the population is the list of everything that we're particularly interested in a population could be like what you would imagine a population of a country or a region but it doesn't have to be other examples of population include uh, owners of a particular brand of phone population doesn't have to be of people it could be of non-animate things such as all the McDonald's in US a sample is part of that so this, if you've studied Venn diagram that's what this is this is a sample it's just part of this so where does statistics come in well let me give you an example say you're a media agency and you'd like to know like you want to get an idea of the time people spend on dating apps so then you might go out and conduct a survey out of 45 people using different kind of dating apps you find that about the average score is about uh, 54.57 minutes per week spent on dating apps that would be a different statement to saying that of all people using dating apps in a particular region the average time spent uh, on the dating apps is no more than 60 minutes per week so the first statement is about th the sample it's about only part of your population whereas the second statement was about the whole lot the population so how we go from making statements about the population from the sample is through what they call inferential statistics so from a sample we say something about the population in this case we've used something called hypothesis testing okay so bear in mind that then we want to say something about the population for some reason we can't get all information from the population maybe it's too costly maybe we just can't get at all the elements of the population and so we have to make do with studying the sample and it's important to note here we study what they call a random sample so that is representative of the population so in a course you're gonna find you spend maybe I don't know a week or two talking about samples and then God you're going to use a lot more time maybe three quarters of the time talk about inferential procedures hypothesis testing confidence intervals that kind of thing okay so statistics is full of symbols and here I find that uh, when these students come to see me they get a bit uh, muddled up with what these symbols mean so we've made a distinction now in statistics between a population and a sample okay let's look at some symbols for the basic statistics we come across okay the mean and let's pretend now you're a student and you're sitting beside me and this is what I do with you I say okay then what do you think is the um, symbol for population mean alright at this point usually the student can't answer otherwise they wouldn't be seeing me I guess but when I write it down they recognize it go ah I've seen that okay so let me do it this have you seen this before okay it's called mu it's Greek letter let me write that down mu it could also be represented as if we're talking about more than one variable you can see sometimes got subscript something like mu x mu subscript y and so on okay or you could see sometimes it's written as the expectation or e of x or e of y all this all these represent the 
population mean of a variable? All right, then how about the sample mean? The sample mean, right, again, they don't usually know, but they recognize it as soon as I write it down. I used to do x bar bar. Okay. Y bar. Basically, anything bar represents the sample mean. Now let me also do this because you also see in some textbooks a lot of tech, well, I'm not say this is standard notation. We make a distinction between big x bar and small x bar. All right, why is that? Well, the cap caps, big X bar, big Y bar represents like the variable, whereas little X bar, little Y bar represents an actual value. Okay, so we could write like in our example with the dating app, little Y bar, uh, average time spent in a week on uh, on dating app uh, could be 54 point, what is it, five, six minutes or something. It's not five, five six minutes. By the way, I made that up. Okay, so that's the mean done. Right, next one. What other important basic stats have you come across? Think. All right, V. A R variance. So we all know that the mean represents like a typical value of a list of numbers, and you know how to calculate that. How about the variance? Well, the variance kind of gives you a measure of the spread or the dispersion of the data about the mean, doesn't it? All right, population variance, what's the symbol for that? Okay, it looks like that. Now at this point, the students don't even know how to pronounce this thing. All right, it looks like a fish squared. It's called sigma squared. Sigma squared, sorry, sigma squared. And uh, how about the sample variance? All right, if you're doing a, base, a course in basic stats, usually you see it written as S squared, cap, capital S squared, and just like same reason as below, you get capital S squared and small s squared. If you're studying something like econometrics, the basically statistics for economists, kind of tool toolkit for economists, um, they use sigma hat squared. Again, we could do a subscript down there if we're talking about more than one variable. Okay, next, what is related to the variance? Standard deviation. What's the population sim uh, standard deviation symbol? All right, now uh, a fair few of my private students would get this once they've seen the variance. Yeah, it's sigma. Good. Now that uh, means um, now I know that they're actually thinking, they're actually clicking. Um, sample standard deviation would just be s or little s or sigma hat and then I asked them alright what's the relationship between the variance and the standard deviation which they can pretty much usually answer the standard deviation is the square root of the variance okay so standard deviation is the square root of the variance they say but I say ah uh, not quite not quite almost there alright why is that it's the positive square root of the variance. Now if we just think back, just give you a simple example, if I ask you what's the square root of 25, a lot of people would just say 5. But then I say, no, it could be 5 or minus 5, because minus 5 squared is 25 as well. But the standard deviation is taken as the, the is a positive square root of the variance. So that's their standard deviation can take the values from 0 upwards. How about the variance? The variance can take the values from 0 and up. It can't be negative, I tell them. You know, in an exam situation, you might kind of kind of just forget that. It can't be negative because anything squared, sigma is a number, anything squared is positive. So therefore, variance can't be negative. The standard deviation and variance, they, they're not negative, all right? Okay, next we move, come on to the number of observations, whatever we are studying, let's say number of observations. What's the symbol for the number of observations in the population? All right, big N, usually, big M, big anything, all right, like that. Uh, how about the sample, be correspondingly, little N, little M, 
etc. And again, you could have little subscripts, big N X, and like that. So over here, little n will represent the sample, what we call the sample size, either the number of observations in the sample. All right, and this will get you a fair way into your course. Later on, you're going to come across something called correlation. So I usually throw this in as well because they're going to see it anyway. When you think of a correlation, just think of a scatter pl plot, x and y. A scatter plot, these dots just represent combinations of x and y that you see, okay? And a co correlation measures the strength or linear relationship between two quantitative or measurable variables. Now I don't expect you to, to uh, expect you to kind of just uh, understand what I've just said there, but let's look at the symbol. So the population correlation, population correlation is uh, population correlation is uh, this symbol here. Looks like uh, looks like a P. It's called rho. It's curly P. And the sample correlation is denoted by little r. If we look at the list of down, uh, columns, you'll see that an easy way to memorize this thing is like, you see a lot of the population symbols for basic stats are Greek. It's like the truth. And the sample is Roman, R Roman lettering. All right, guys, I hope that's helped you a million dollars. This might be a video that you just uh, bookmark and come back to uh, during your course. And that is my lesson one in basic stats. Have a good day.